ultimatum does make you realize how serious this is to be picking the person that you want to be with forever. I gave the ultimatum, but Hunter is not perfect for husband material yet because I make more than him. I have no desire to be the breadwinner in the relationship. Now I'm kind of starting to wonder if Hunter is the one for me. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. We are here with the one and only Alexis Parr from The Ultimatum to hear all about her wedding and get life updates and talk a little bit about the season. And we're going to dish on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So definitely stay tuned and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Alexis, happy Friday. It's so nice to see your face. How are you? Oh, good to see you. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm having a little bit of um, decompression from that crazy Instagram live last night with Shayna and Shane and <laughs> Shake showed up. Did you catch any of it? I caught all of it. I loved it. I was like dying just because of the forum of how it like took place and how they're like, well, we need to talk about X, Y, Z. Well, that's the thing. I told them, I was like, do we, how do we want the vibe to be? Cause I do a lot of interviews and they really just wanted to have like a catch up kiki yeah. and like bring the drinks and they had things they wanted to address so i didn't really have to like ask that many questions so it was more of like a hangout and it turned into the most like dramatic live ever it was so chaotic i i saw it was like what is happening here like can we round out this <laughs> yeah i was i was trying to move it along it was a mess feel free to check that out um are you familiar with like a lot of other netflix shows or was going on the ultimatum just like out of a whim for you um i love all the netflix shows like i love netflix i watched love is blind one i watched love is blind two um i watch a lot of this stuff so selling sunset Oh my God. Yes. I love it all. Okay. I know you're a reality TV girl. That's why I can't wait to talk to you about RHOBH. Um, but tell us like, what's new? Like, where are you working? Where are you living? Like what's been going on? So after the show wrapped in like my, May, maybe of 2021, we, Hunter and I moved out here to LA. So we're in Brentwood. We love it. We've been living here for like a year and a half now. And uh, we both work at the same company. We've stayed with like our current jobs, which is a tech company. Cool. And like, tell us a little bit about what you do for work. So we're, we're both in tech sales. So like I sell, it's so boring to talk about, but I sell like database, something that you literally can't see to people okay. who have been in the tech world for longer than I've like been alive. And you're not causing like any crazy ruckus, right? Because Jen Shaw from Salt Lake City, you know, she was doing some database too. And that ended up pretty poorly for her. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing is happening like that. Oh my God, that was <laughs> actually crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, everything with work has stayed consistent. I've obviously been working with an agency as well and doing like some influencing stuff kind of on the side, but um, I've stayed with my normal job and everything. Yeah. And sometimes people like listening, like, or watching, like love to hear about like everyone's boring jobs because like everyone has these boring jobs and that's why they watch reality TV shows to like yes. spice things up. A hundred percent. We have to live vicariously through them. Yeah. And you ended up on the ultimatum. So how did you guys apply for the show? How did you end up on it? I personally loved it. So I cannot wait for season two. I know. I'm trying to figure out when season two is coming. I hope soon. I think soon. I heard but, um, in later in the year, possibly. Yeah. Like the queer season. So they, um, uh, like casting director reached out to me over Instagram. Hunter and I were having conversations at the time of, whether or not we wanted to move. And if we were going to move, like, would we get engaged or would we live together for like a year? So they literally messaged me and I was like, oh my God, they're listening to our conversations. We're having these yeah. conversations. And That's it was kind the of a iPhone. Joke. The yes. iPhone picks up everything. I was like, they're listening. And so, and that's what I was texting my friends and stuff and kind of laughing and joking. And then I ended up hearing them out, got on the phone with them and like call after call after call months went by and it was like holy crap like this actually might be a real thing but we kind of always thought we're never going to get like chosen for this mm -hmm. blah, blah 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 and it was positioned to us as you know you're coming on with other couples as a couple I think that was like what sold me mm -hmm. is that I'm not coming on as a single I'm coming on as a couple and you're 
going to be relating to other couples in a very similar situation that where one person is kind of ready and one person is dragging their feet for whatever reason. It's like kind of like marriage boot camp where it's like, yes. like a therapy type thing. But then when you got there, it was clearly a wife swap. So it really threw you for a loop so much so that you guys didn't even want to go through with the competition. Do you ever regret the way things turned out? Do you wish that you stayed? Do you feel like you got everything you needed out of it for your relationship? I'm so glad I did not stay. I it don't looks crazy. <laughs> I wouldn't have wanted to live with another person. So I was living alone before I'd never lived with a guy. So my first time living with a guy, if I had stayed would have been with like a person I'd wow. known for, you know, yeah. and it's special that Hunter and I got to same for him. So special mm-hmm. that we got to live together. I wouldn't have wanted to kind of air me living with someone on TV. That's not the person that I'm even really wanting to get married to at the time. So I'm more than happy with how it turned out. I obviously had no idea though, that we were that was going to be. So were you like pissed at the producers? Did you feel like it was a setup? Oh, uh, like the whole, um, the whole experiment. It's hard. Cause like you're there, you've committed to it mentally, but yeah, I mean, we had to have chats with the, like we had to have conversations about it. And I remember being like, okay, well, is it like a two bedroom? And like, we're sharing yeah. experience. <laughs> like I was just very naive, I think. And then it kind of just happened. And I was like, holy crap. And I remember they were asking me like, so who are you going to want to live with? Who are you going to want to live with the producers? And I was like, who should I live with? Who should I choose? <laughs> and they're like, Alexis, it has to be your choice. I'm like, I know, but who do you think? <laughs> and I feel like you're so like particular and like you're, you have your, like the way you go about things. Like I couldn't imagine you living with a guy that like wouldn't have that respect for you because you're so feminine and like you clearly like your privacy. Yeah. The fact that you even have to say, is there two bedrooms? I'm like me, literally me. Yes. Yes. I, it's just like, I, I work from home. So I would have been home a lot and mm. sharing that one space with literally. Colby, working maybe. Home. Yeah. Like, and I'm a homebody. I like my alone time and only child. So I like being, having my own private time and you know, Hunter and I both work from home and, but yet we give each other the space we need. And when you're living with someone that you barely know, it's hard to like figure out, okay, how do I communicate with this person? How does this person communicate with me? It would have been, I mean, and you saw it with other couples, like it is a challenging experience for sure. It it seemed like some of the other couples needed to do it in order for their relationship to grow or, and a lot of them obviously broke up besides Madeline and Kobe and then Shanique and Randall as well. But you guys ended up just getting engaged right then and there. Did you have any idea he was going to propose? And are you glad that it happened that way? And then I have to ask, like, if he ended up reproposing after when the cameras weren't there. So here's what happened. And here's what I knew. So the night before was the night where you kind of see all of us talking. And I described it as the night that, like, April and Jake had that kind of blow up fight. Because that's mm-hmm. kind of what people remember. And you know, that night I remember consoling a lot of the girls and talking to them and they don't like show any of this, but I'm trying to, it's really the first time for me to like talk to these people one-on-one with, and kind of understand their situation and my situation and connect with these people. And I'm learning that like, you know, a lot of people are in similar situations. A lot of people are going through conversations that they never had before on camera a lot of people are here for the wrong intentions. Like Mm -hmm. I was learning a lot. So I go to bed that night and Hunter, I guess, is one of the last people to leave. We didn't all leave at the same time. And he pulled the producers aside and said, I'm ready to marry Alexis. And they're like, what? Like, are you sure about this? He's like, I'm sure. And, you know, they ask him why. And he gives him his, they give, he gives the reason. And then he's like, but I don't like want, like, what does this mean? And they're like, you have to propose then if you're ready. And he's mm-hmm. like, well, we signed a contract like for an eight week gig. Like, I don't want to mess up anything that you guys had. And they're like, no, no, if you know, like you can't continue to go on because that's yeah. just like not. You're wasting everyone's time if right. you weren't committed to the process. Exactly. And so they're like, we'll regroup with you tomorrow. See if you're still feeling the same way mm-hmm. and reassess. And so the next day I see we're all living in our own situations and I go to get coffee and I see like Lauren and April down there both telling me that they want to pick Hunter to live with and you're like and no like, <laughs> and no I'm literally just like great for you glad that you guys have someone that you're like wanting to live with that happens to be Hunter 
I wasn't shocked by it at all. Mm -hmm. And, but I was also just like, Hunter, who are you going to pick? And like, he wasn't talking to me. Like there was nothing. Why do we think? He was told by the producers, you cannot tell a single person because then it doesn't give the true effect. Like Mm -hmm. it's not fair. If I knew it's not fair if anyone else knew. So he, him and the producers were the only ones that knew. Nate didn't know. Lauren didn't know. I didn't know. No one knew. Wow. Um, and so I I obviously wish I knew because I was having like a really shitty day. Yeah, that was shown. Just like the emotions were real. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It was also very confusing, to be honest. When everyone was pairing up, I thought if it was very clear that couples are pairing up like new couples, right? You would think once those couples are paired up, you can no longer like live with those people or choose mm-hmm. to live with those people. That wasn't the case. So it was like a little bit confusing for us going through it. I was confused why they didn't put Hunter at the end if they knew that he was going to propose all of it. But when he did propose, my heart was just like, what? Like, you were I think shocked. I was shocked. I like started crying. I like blacked out for a second. I stood up and I was like, so, so happy. Uh-huh. And it would end up being the best night. It was really cute. Hunter's like, can I sit next to Alexis after I propose? And they're like, no, for continuity, <laughs> you have to go back to your seat. Oh my God. I'm, it's not musical chairs. That's awesome though, that you were so surprised. Cause I think that's the point of a proposal. Yeah. And, and maybe even these reality shows where we see them get engaged at the end, it almost like takes it away because they give you yeah. a free ring and they set it up so perfectly and you know, it's happening. So the fact that yours happened on TV in this organic way, and he didn't even have a ring, right? No, he didn't. And he had, I guess, asked them to be like, Hey, can I do it in my way? Like, I want to get the ring. I want to do it where, you know, and they're like, no, sorry, you have to do it like on film tomorrow. It's the choice. Um, I obviously did not care that there wasn't a ring. It ended up working out great. We got to go pick it out together. Ooh, so show us the ring. Fabulous. So did he ever end up proposing again or you just kind of picked it out together and he, you know, bought it or financed it? No, like that was the real proposal. Like That's awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we got to go pick out the ring. And then once we moved to LA, which is like right after that week of filming, um, we had an engagement party with like all our friends and family and kind of started the celebration. Although like, you know, with the tight knit group, because we had to keep it under wraps. Yeah. I was going to say like, you probably didn't post it on Instagram that you were engaged. You couldn't. No. And that's the problem with, I think, a lot of Netflix shows that fans have been having is that, like, everything happens in real time and then we don't see it for nine months. So then the right. reality stars aren't able to be honest on social media, especially when they gain the following, what we saw with Love is Blind and After the Altar. So there's been kind of a little bit of a disconnect, um, I think, recently. So hopefully Netflix kind of gets it together. And another disconnect, I think, was your edit. Um, a lot of people have things to say about you. I know you personally, so I know you're lovely, but tell us how, you know, you the responses and the reactions you got from what was shown and what is the real Alexis? Well, my personality is like, so I'm from the East Coast. I'm very like, I tell you how it is, but I'm also like a really, I'm a girl's girl. Like I'm always going to support mm. the girl unless for some reason I have the relationship before with the guy. And I don't think that was shown because, you know, I had a lot of conversations one off with the girls, like, you know, being kind of their support person and having those one on ones and like talking to them. I also have no problem if someone's like, you should go ask this, this and this question. Yeah, I'm kind of just like, okay, okay. Like, yeah, you're so you're you're easygoing, you're nonchalant, you give no fucks. I don't. And, you know, unfortunately, every. It's reality TV. You have to realize that like it's it's not scripted, but it kind of is in situations. So when people are like, oh, I watched her, you know, on reality TV and I filmed for a week, like that's not me. That's, yeah. You don't know me. That's yeah. the edits and the conversations that they put us in that they wanted us to have. Did you like the way you came across though? Because you, to be honest, you came across kind of bitchy and clearly that's not how you actually are or it's just, you're just fun with it. But like, did that piss you off that you got certain reactions from fans? No, because I I went into it knowing that like, I'm going to be the outspoken person mm-hmm. and I, I'm not bitchy, but I am that like kind of sarcastic. Like I tell you how it is and you either hate that or you like it. And people aren't going to like that if they feel like they're targeted. But I 
I would say the biggest thing for me was like, uh, when I came back for the bachelorette, I was like the way that I edited it was, you know, yeah, me counting every, no, like we were having one-off conversations. They wanted to know about what I was doing and they were filling me in like, well, this is what's been happening. Cause I had no idea what was happening for those four weeks that had gone by. Yeah. So it's not, it wasn't really like that, but I mean, as far as like me on the dates and stuff, you really didn't get to see a lot. And they were 30 minute long conversations. And I would say half the time we were literally talking about like our exes. Yeah. It's, it's, exes. it's so interesting to like watch TV shows and then interview or just talk to people. Like we actually connected before the show started. I think we just followed each other on TikTok when I promoted the trailer. Yes. So then I knew you were cool people. So I was like, okay, I'm looking out for Alexis this season. Um, I love it. And then it was kind of short lived. So how did you think the rest of the season played out? We had Randall and Shanique, they got engaged and they broke off the engagement. Ray and Jake, they didn't work. Ray and Zay didn't work. Colby and Madeline were the winning couple, pregnant and married. Yeah. When we watched it, I was, it was hard to watch because like I imagine them watching this back and they have already moved on in their lives. Again, yeah. like we talked about, like it's been months. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, like a, a lot of people were vulnerable, which I appreciate. I thought it was good TV and it was good. Um, you know, I think some of the couples like they just didn't show their best qualities when like I've met these people and I think everyone that you probably interview on reality TV, like it's not a hundred percent accurate of how they're depicting them. So I would say that across the board, you know, For and sure. you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, Ray is like my bestie from your season. I love Ray, I love Ray so much. Um, and I've also interviewed Madeline, which I loved interviewing her because she came off crazy on the show and she is so freaking cool in real life. So everybody yeah. feel free to check those out. But who are you staying in touch with from the show and who are you and Hunter close with? So I would say Ray, funny enough, Ray and Zay. Okay. Um, oh, both of them, but like separately, because I know they're not on like speaking terms. Yeah. And then I think Hunter still keeps in, tr uh, in contact with Randall a lot. Like they were pretty cool after... Um, I've like messaged Lauren and Nate a little bit just because they got recently yeah, married. Yeah, they just got married. And they and got a lot of backlash. Um, people are yeah. still mad at it. And it was just like, no, it was so, it was a moment in TV. Yeah. I mean, I kind of expected that to happen from just like viewers because I was also like producers. Why did you guys choose to have <laughs> them go last? Like, I don't know. A lot could have been avoided, I think. For sure. So <laughs> let's talk about your wedding because you are a officially a married woman. So yes. congratulations. Tell us about it. Where was it? How many dresses? Was it the best day of your life? And why wasn't I invited? <laughs> okay, love it. So oh my God, we would have loved to invite you except you should have seen our video. Like people are like sardines in our chapel because it can only fit 100 people and we invited 115. Gotcha. <laughs> Or we had 115, but um, it was in Palos Verdes. The chapel was at Wayfair's Chapel, and then the ceremony, or then the reception was at Palos Verdes Golf Course. And it was literally the best day. It was like what I had dreamed of as a kid. I have always wanted to get married there since I was like five, and it came to life. And I just felt like a princess. I had one dress, and then I switched to a second party dress. We did like a welcome drinks the night Whoa. before, a rehearsal dinner the night before, and then a brunch Sunday. So how long ago was this? What's your date? June 18th was the day we got married. Cool. And then we went to Greece for our honeymoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And how was your honeymoon? Amazing. I Unreal. love that. And if I you're love listening, Mykonos. Oh, oh, my God. Greece looks fun. If you guys are listening to the podcast on Spotify, we have some pictures on the YouTube channel of the wedding. Alexis is sending me some. So you guys can see how magical of a day it was. But we also saw the pictures in People magazine. And me and Ray had your back because some people <laughs> thought you were posing too hard. This was like a viral moment. Like a lot of people had something to say. So what did you think about those pictures? I love it. I love that everyone had something to say. Everyone did. Literally. It's too funny. I, I just like, okay, it cracks me up. But so we had like 15 minutes prior to the ceremony to take photos. And that was when we did like our first look. So it's like an intimate moment. I posted some photos on my Instagram where like you can see, you know, I'm tapping him and we're turning around. And then we literally took five photos of us, us facing the camera, like directly on. So of those, we had to pick 
while I'm about to be walking down the aisle, which one to send off to people from, from the photographer. So I love the one that we picked because like the wind was in, you know, blowing my veil mm -hmm. and it was directly on. There was definitely some that we probably could have picked that where it's like the smiling, but it didn't have like the veil. There was like some, or Hunter was like looking down or I was looking down. It was like, we didn't have, we didn't, hadn't taken our photo photos yet. We took yeah. them after the ceremony. Gotcha. And there was the whole thing with getting, but I love the photo. I'm happy with it. That's I all that matters. Say, and my thing is if someone has an opinion on it, let me know when you have your people photo <laughs> and then you can pick whichever you want. <laughs> let them know. I love that. Good for you. It's your wedding, your pictures. It turned out yeah. beautiful. So it's Thank glad you. to see that this show ended up working out for you and that you and Hunter are happy. You live together in LA. Are you guys planning on having kids? Is that the next step? Uh, I mean, yeah, we want to have kids, but not like right this second. So I think, you know, it'll be like a year and then we'll reassess kind of the situation. But we definitely want kids. Yes. No. Are you trying to maybe you said you're doing a little bit of content. Are you trying to get into like the influencer space and kind of capitalize off of your new following? Or is that just not something you're interested in? You know, I, I think it's like something about your twenties where you're like, you're trying to kind of figure it out still. And for me, I think what's really interesting is like hosting, giving, like talking about relationships and like being advocates and kind of giving your experience and hearing from others. And Something like that would be really interesting to me. But, you know, going on another show, I don't really know how that would work unless it was like a, a couple, couple show. Yeah, Amazing like, race. Yeah. Like I could see Hunt. I always joke. I want Hunter to go on um, Dancing with the Stars Ooh. Um, because he's such a good dancer. But I would love to do like a hosting type thing where I can kind of chat with couples because it's you're putting yourself out. You're vulnerable. And I think the more honest you are with yourself and like the more you have someone kind of cheering you on the better the experience is for you you know yeah I mean you guys are a team now so that's yeah. awesome and you love dancing with the stars are you rooting for Charlie because I kind of think she's gonna win at 100%. this point but is it too obvious that she's gonna win I love her and Gabby um mm -hmm. I was shocked that they put Charlie and Heidi on at the same season but I think it's cute but it adds, yeah, it adds to the show. I want them to adds. get into like some healthy competition. Ripped. Like he is. insane. I was like, damn, I hope I look like that as a mom. Right. You will. You totally will. Um, let's talk R H O B H. This finale was so crazy. And the reunion team trailer. Kathy or Team Lisa. I'm Team Kathy. What about you? A hundred percent. Like, did you see the trailer? She's like, you're the biggest bully in Hollywood, and everyone knows it. I was like, go off, Kathy. Go, go off. off. Do you think she's really going to like annihilate Lisa at the reunion? Because I feel like the trailer only showed like Kathy's side. But I think they were just doing that because Lisa had like the final say the last few episodes since Kathy doesn't really film confessionals to kind of like even the playing fields. I don't I don't think Kathy's going to go in because I don't think it's worth her time. Like she it's she's Kathy Hilton. Like she doesn't need the housewives in the way that Lisa needs the housewives. You know what I mean? Like. Kathy can be like, I'm good. I'm bowing out. Lisa needs it to stay relevant. And Kathy will always be relevant, which is why I love her and Paris and the whole fam. Yes, we love the Hiltons. I've always loved the Hiltons. We used to like go to their hotels when I was a kid and I would look for Paris everywhere and ask all the staff and I never found her, but I did meet her at the Abbey um, recently. So have you met a lot of like reality stars and celebrities since you've been in LA? Who are some of your favorites? So I've met some, I met like, we, you know, the event that we were at together, the yeah. Netflix event. so like the selling sunset people. And I love all the girls from that. Truly. Um, I've met Natalie, obviously, and DT from love is wine. Yeah. Um, love them. And which is why it's so interesting. The thing that you had last night, cause it's like such a like opposite yeah. of what you would expect. Um, but I've met Paris Hilton and she's like my biggest celeb crush. I'm obsessed cool. with her. And it was at Kathy Hilton's house. So it was just like a match made. Did you happen. go? Why'd you go to Kathy's house? Did you go for like a real house like Beverly Hills premiere or something? So randomly, like there's this woman that I know who puts on a lot of events and I was going and that's where I met like the D'Amelio sisters. Mm -hmm. And um, it was for like a dog 
foundation. There. Yes. It was really cute. And there were dogs there and it was an amazing event. And then Ooh. the next day they were having <laughs> the cocktail <laughs> event, the tequila, which is all over the housewives. And that was at Kathy's house as well. And that's where Paris was. Oh, cool. Who do you not like on Beverly Hills? I personally think that Crystal, she's so fabulous, but she's just, she's got to go. She's just not Diana, fitting into the group. Diana needs to go. She's like, no, I can't with her. Crystal, I like, yeah, I what like Crystal, but, but what, what? Oh, yeah. So you say? <laughs> uh, she just like, I, everything that comes out of her mouth, I'm like, I can't with her, but okay. So I, I like Crystal a lot, but my question is like, why is she on the housewives? Like that doesn't match with me, but I, mm-hmm. I think like, I like her and I would like her, but she doesn't give us the content we need. Mm-hmm. For sure. The housewives, there's really really messy i'm actually going to bravo con next week in new york city i heard you say that i'm literally so, so excited to, i'll make sure to vlog everything i'm sure i'll talk to some housewives i love jersey housewives so i'm most excited to see them do you watch any other franchises i watch i mean new york's probably my favorite so are you sad that it's gone i just like love sonia and ramona they i love that they were all actually really friends outside of the show it was just very clear Mm-hmm. So I like that's my favorite. And then I think Beverly Hills. Have you seen Selling the OC on Netflix? Yeah. What did you think about Tyler and Alex Hall and everyone? I first of all, it was hard to watch compared to the other selling sunsets. Do you think because... selling sunsets better? Yeah. Well, I don't know when they're gonna give us selling the OC, but that's the problem. What I was saying with Netflix, it takes so long to deliver a new season. Um, do you know anything about the ultimatum season two? Like, do you have any teases for us? There's a lot more drama than in season one. I would expect that because that's what happens. You can like the first season is more like organic and then the, it's like an experiment. And then the second season, the producers know what they're getting themselves well, into. And they were a little bit more transparent and open and honest to the cast about the expectations. So like they knew going into it, the premise, they knew going into it, you weren't going to have your phones in the first week, which like there was a lot of things that with any first season, it's a learning experience for both the cast and the producers. Yeah. And then the second season, it gets ramped up and you don't really go into it blind as you do the first one. Um, But this has been so much fun chatting with you and learning more about your story from the ultimatum and your wedding. Where can everyone follow you and what do we have? Like, what can we keep up with? Like, what's next for you? Um, Okay, so Instagram, Alexis Parr. And um, I so Hunter and I have a lot of travel coming up. We have a lot of fun things planned. Where are you guys going? everywhere like we just came back from dallas we're going to new york we're doing chicago we're doing like we're doing a lot palm springs so a lot of travel um i'll probably be coming out with a lot more content and now that things are kind of slowed down after the wedding yeah also i have a question for you bachelor nation or housewives bachelor nation housewives for me yeah I've just dedicated so much of my life to the bachelor like I started watching when I was 10 and I didn't start housewives until 18 so it's like there's different loyalty but Netflix I like more right now than housewives I love Netflix reality Netflix is crushing it they need to like come back because they're not crushing it really but we love it yeah well love is blind is going to come out the ultimatum did you see dated or related no was that good no I didn't watch it because nobody watched it it happened Labor Day weekend and everyone was out of town and then I didn't get traction online so I was like I'm not gonna waste my time watching it if nobody's gonna talk about it with me yeah okay so one of the producers of the ultimatum um came to my wedding Mm -hmm. and she just did love boat and I think that came out I saw that so I might watch that because I loved her. So support it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for being here. Everybody go follow Alexis. I will leave her Instagram down below. And do you want me to leave your TikTok? Are you going to do some more content there? Yeah, leave it. Okay, we're leaving the TikTok. Um, and thank you all so much for watching or listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. And we will talk to you guys later. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. Thanks.